Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of the Motherland Experience. It's your girl Nye here and today I have a lovely couple in store for you. I'm going to be sitting down and chatting with the amazing Dr. Beverly and Mr. Linford as they're going to discuss their journey here from the UK to the Motherland, full of a lot of jam packed full of history and just overall wonderful conversation. So sit back, relax and let me take you for a ride. Hey guys, I am so excited to be sitting here with this lovely couple. I feel like it's been ages since I have talked to them. I feel so relaxed, so at peace, and they are just absolutely awesome people. So please help me welcome Dr. Beverly and Mr. Linford to the show. Hi, Hi thank you, guys. you so much. Thank you so much oh, for your welcome. Oh, how are you? Well, we're better for seeing you now. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. That's so sweet. Well, you guys look good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And you look like your mom. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, shout out to my mom. <laughs> That's flattering. This is such an honor. Thank you so much for being on the channel. I really, really appreciate it. So please, can you share with our lovely viewers where you guys are from? England. England. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. England. Where in England? Well, um, I was born in a place called Dulwich in South London. Mm, okay. Way back in the 50s. Wow. So I'm quite ancient. Oh, uh, no, you was a good girl. You ain't ancient. You're not ancient. So where are you from? Um, uh, Ballam, if anybody knows. Ballam in southwest Ballam. London. Yeah. So okay. London, southwest London, place called Ballam. Yeah. Born in Brixton, actually. Grew up in Ballam. Shout out to Ballam. That's right. Shout out to Ballam. So what you actually call us is South Londoners. South Londoners. Because if you're from okay. South London, we're South Londoners. And mm -hmm. if you're South, usually the accent is South Londoners. Mm -hmm. I'm from the South. Okay, all, all right. right. I can tell. You look proud of that. You're like, I'm from the South. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. So tell me, what brought kind of like, how long have you been here to Ghana? Um, coming up to 12 weeks now. Almost three weeks. months. Okay, so, so so almost three months. You guys are newbies. We came together, yes. Oh, <laughs> you they came together, guys. So how are you? How are you finding the adjustment to Ghana? Oh, good question. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm have to be in slow motion because mm, okay. we're coming from a place that's quite fast. Do you know, like microwave? Put right. in a microwave. It's done. Exactly. Exactly. So kind of getting used to that vibe is a little yeah. bit of an adjustment, right? Yeah. Mm. It, 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 it's different. Let's put it this way. It's mm. different. Mm. How would you say different? <laughs> it is different. <laughs> In what way? I don't know. Things, things, things um, take their own, as we say, their own merry time mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. done. Right. Right. That's a phrase we use. Mm -hmm. When yeah. someone's been slow, we normally say, well, take your own merry time. Mm -hmm. And this is how it feels like being here in Ghana. Yeah. But we can't expect when someone says, right, I'm going to be there in five minutes, mm -hmm. that they will be there in five minutes. <laughs> but we're, we're like, OK, we're going to get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. We're going to get ready. And then, OK, it's, right. ten, it's 10 to 5 now. Mm -hmm. And so we're ready, sat waiting. Exactly. It'll sit, listen, God, I will sit you lady. I have to say, you know, GP time. I definitely understand that and getting used to that. Like you said, in a microwave type, it can be a little bit of a challenge, you know, yes. but it's, it's definitely doable. It's just, you know, kind of just getting into the flow and into the vibe, would you say? But, but I guess Linford would agree that, that, that us being quote unquote pensioners, mm -hmm. <laughs> then we need to slow down. Right, would you mm. agree with that? Mm. I was going to say that that isn't, hasn't been a problem for me as such. Mm -hmm. I welcome the idea that I can take my time. Mm. I've tried to do that for the last 20 years. Right, <laughs> exactly. So you can't do that in the US, And it US, hasn't been right? possible. In yeah. fact, in fact, I'm still trying to be as busy as I was in the West. I, you know, there's a pull to be that busy. Mm, right. And I have to remind myself that I can actually take the time yeah. to smell the coffee. Who is yeah. it to smell the coffee, yeah. smell the aroma? So yeah. why Ghana? What started your journey here? I'll tell you what, for me, mm. this journey started in um, 2012 when I sought out to, to, 
to find where did I come from oh. and um, my connection to a people. So um, I did a lot of research. Um, I ended up writing a book. Really? Which told me that Ghana at one point had 44 Hebrew kings ruled in Ghana at one time. Really? And because, you know, that's my line. Yes, I do. <laughs> that's my direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, immediately the, the antennas came up and I said, ooh, that is where I need to go. That is where I fit in perfectly. Mm -hmm. Even though the Ghanaians may not know this history, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need to be on purpose. Wow. Wow, that's really, really deep. I didn't even know that. Yeah. You know that you said 40? 44. 44. Yeah. Wow, so, so I'm getting a history lesson, guys. I didn't mm. know that. Mm -hmm. So with your research, you found like, Ghana to be that because of that Hebrew connection. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, we, I know we use the term Hebrew, right. but, the, but the real term is mm -hmm. Bantu, mm -hmm. if you're talking about Hebrews. Mm -hmm. The thing that I learned about Ghana is that the name Ghana was given to as one of the titles, one of the two titles mm -hmm. of these kings. Really? One was Kaya Maga, which means um, master of gold. Mm -hmm. And Ghana actually means war chief. Really? The um, ancient name for Ghana mm -hmm. is called al -Ka. It was not called Ghana. Ghana mm. is simply one of the titles given to these 44 Hebrew stroke Bantu kings. Wow, oh my gosh, that is just so, so awesome. History is very fascinating to me yeah. because there's so much that we don't, that we don't know and right. that we're learning each and every day, right. you know? So with you saying that, that that was, that that kind of led you to God, like, you know, you did research and how you were like digging. So would you say that was your mm. experience? <laughs> well, we, we shared that experience, but mm -hmm. um, um, another side of, that experience is, um, I was born in England, but mm. my parents came from Jamaica. Oh, really? Yes, and um, specifically in Jamaica, my father is from a place called Portland. Mm. And Portland is known, among other things, for a community that are now described as the Maroons. Mm. Um, that's not the original name. But they have kept their connection to their African heritage. I take it we all understand that all black people come from Africa. Yeah. Actually, not everybody mm -hmm. is aware of that. Not all our children have that clear understanding. Oh, but sure. certainly my, the community my father came from, mm -hmm. very clear about their African heritage mm -hmm. and, and uh, spoke an African language, mm -hmm. um, which can be traced to West Africa. That's dying out, unfortunately. It's a, it's a language I should have learned while they were still mm. alive. Mm -hmm. um, but my father used to speak about Kwame Nkrumah and uh, Ghana and um, would love to have made it back here mm. and didn't. Mm. So for me, it's a homecoming mm. and it's, it's the completion mm. of a journey that my father started. Wow, I think that's really beautiful. Mm. So in a way, it's like, even though your father did not, wasn't able to make it, sure. you are the one that Absolutely. came. So it's Absolutely. almost like his his dream is yeah. coming to life. Yeah. So there was my father and his six brothers, and there are their sons, all of whom are my cousins. Mm. None of them have done this. They've visited mm. Africa, but mm. they've not relocated to Africa to live mm. for good. So when I told them eventually at the last minute that I was doing that, they were mm. um, lost for words. <laughs> wow. They're like, what? They're like, what? Very happy. <laughs> Very happy. Yeah. Oh, that's really awesome. So kind of with you, you guys sharing your connection to Ghana, what does Ghana mean to you? Um, Ghana is a connection back to the motherland or um, what you call 
it wasn't called Africa before. Right. Yeah. We know it was called Al Kebulun. Mm, okay. It was called Al Kebulun, and Al Kebulun actually means Garden of Eden. Really? The whole of sub Saharan Africa was called Al Kebulun. Do you understand? Mm. Yes, and it means the Garden of Eden because, in actual fact, the Garden of Eden is located up south. Mm -hmm. Not down south, up south. up south. Because south is up mm -hmm. and all the rivers flow down mm -hmm. towards Egypt. Mm -hmm. So the Garden of Eden was located up south. Gotcha. And understanding this history is so important for us coming here. Mm -hmm. Because we're doing it for a whole bloodline. We're doing it yes. for a whole people who were snatched from this land and scattered to the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. And we don't even know now where we come from. See? But see, that's scriptural though. Scriptural. Mm -hmm. That's scriptural. That we would know that, that the remembrance would be taken away from us. And that's what's so fascinating about this time. I feel like it's like our time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's really yeah. our time to to come here. Yeah. You know, so kind of what does what does Ghana mean to you? Uh well not retirement. Mm-hmm. Oh, you definitely know. not. <laughs> not <retirement. laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> not at my, at our age, mm -hmm. we have earned the right to retire. Mm -hmm. We could quite easily retire, mm -hmm. but um, this is uh, uh, a work to be done. Mm -hmm. And there's so much that we can talk about. But let's mm -hmm. say I want to do some work with schools. Really? Want to impact the education system in Ghana? Mm, in what way? By any means necessary. Oh, okay. I mean, By any means on, necessary. On, on a simple <laughs> level, apparently, um, uh, some schools need books. Mm -hmm. We can do something about that, surely. Yeah. My friends in the West can do something about that, surely. Exactly. So, exactly. There is a work to be done here in the mm -hmm. UK, and I have about. Mm. 20, 20 years left to do it. <laughs> oh, listen, you may have longer. I may have longer. No, <laughs> no, we, we, we've got a longer time. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you for why. Because I firmly believe that those who were born in the 50s, um, their lives have been spared for a reason. Because the next generation after us, what are they doing? We're trying yeah. to hand them the baton and they won't take it. Yeah. So I believe the Most High mm -hmm. is sparing our lives to do the job that the next generation is supposed to do. Mm, okay, I, I get you. I can understand that, you know, because it seems like people born in the 50s, kind of like, it's almost kind of like you have a, a zeal. You know what I'm saying? A zeal to do, to help, kind of like to revolutionize. Yes. And that mentality is slowly leaving, unfortunately. Wow. Well. But I feel that it's it's coming back and it's probably going to come back through, through your generation. I'll tell you what, it's really <laughs> burning in our bones. It's like, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like a heat. It's like, ooh, a bubbling in our bones. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I do not feel like people like myself and Linford our work has just started. Mm, amen. I believe it. I'm touching yeah. the ground with you guys. Yeah. Your work is just begun. You just, know, it, it, just it, begun. it may actually be time for that poem that you requested. Oh, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I don't listen, know. I want to hear it. I do want to hear let's, let's it. Let's see if I can read the first verse. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to build something. Mm -hmm. You're trying to tear it down. Well, I'm the quick fix. I move at the speed of sound. I'm trying to run with something. You're trying to slow it down. Well, I'm the quick fix. I move at the speed of sound was back in year four, we called it primary. A teacher would ring a big bell to start assembly. And ever since then, I saw the power of sound to make my world stop, make people come around. And we've been getting there, coming around to doing something extraordinary. Yeah, and we're in a hurry. I see a school of business, complete with tennis courts, full of bad boys who never did get caught. Because we caught them first. And it's a fine line between just talking and walk the walk talking. I see a school of business, make that the music business. The Hammond and the Fender strutting back to back and it goes on and on and on and on. Oh, <laughs> I mean, to listen, back. been serenaded today. Did not expect to get that lovely poem. Okay. It's called Quick Fix. Quick Fix. I love it. I love the inspiration behind it. 
Ah, the particular inspiration, I can't remember now, but years and years of working with young people. Mm -hmm. And um, being misunderstood, because there are those who think I'm trying to hold on to my youth. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely not trying to hold on to my youth. I'm trying to empower the next generation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was a, <clears throat> a bit of anger in the poem that says, I'm trying to do something. Right. And you're trying to give me a hard time. Mm. That, that was the inspiration. Okay, oh. so kind of listen. So you kind of like you're trying to give me a hard time. A little rebel in you. <laughs> well, I love it. It was absolutely awesome. It was. So thank you for that. Oh. So with you being here as a couple, how do you think coming here to Ghana has strengthened you? You guys were already strong as a couple, but kind of like how has it affected you as a couple? Good question. Do you know <laughs> something? Um, when we decided to come to Ghana, we were in total agreement about it. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's funny, it puts us both as a couple, it put us on the same page. Mm -hmm. For the first time, it put us on the same page. It put us on, 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 onto another level of agreement. Really? When she says that, it sounds as if we weren't on the same page. Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, That's how it sounds. No, it, just, it sounds like yeah. that, but that's not what I mean. Mm. Yeah. What I mean, it's another level of agreement. Right, it's like another, yeah, it's like a deeper, maybe yeah, deeper level. Yeah, a deeper uh. level of agreement. And um, we're loving it. Mm. We're so, we're so much, what I say, we're so much in sync. Mm -hmm. uh, we're so much in sync with uh, what, what we want to see happen in Ghana in mm. terms of the young people, in terms of putting back the history mm -hmm. that was snatched away or yeah. putting back the history that was never taught in the curriculum in these schools here in Ghana. Oh, you could say that again. It was shocking actually coming here and seeing that you have German schools, Swiss schools, I mean, British schools, American schools, and we were kind of like, what is this? You know what I'm saying? And we're here uh, in the motherland, we're here in Ghana, you know? So this is a land full of melanated people. Why are they learning curriculum that is from the West? Exactly. So I can agree with you more. <laughs> and I believe mm. the reason why is because the European countries, they want to continue to feed mm. off of Africa. Africa is their food. Mm. If Africa does not exist, yeah. all the other nations die. They sure do. They sure do. They say it's Hello. the breadbasket of the world, right? I mean, there is an argument that, that there is an argument that says African mm. African history is taught in African schools here because mm. they know about their presidents, for example. Mm. Um, anyone can teach you uh, historical dates. Mm. Only some people can teach you to love your country, and that's actually what's missing. That's actually what's missing. Mm. It's not the information. It's the connection. Right. So we can teach the connection because we can say we have chosen to leave the West with us, all that money and all that opulence mm -hmm. to come here because we love the nation. Mm -hmm. We love the people. Mm -hmm. We love the ground. Mm -hmm. You can't teach that from a history book. But, um, but it needs to be taught in schools True. somehow mm. by teachers who yeah. have that position. Right. So it's not that about connection. history per mm. se. It's about historical connection to the land. That's so true. That's very, very true. Because, I, I'm sorry, but I've got to say this. You mm -hmm. know, the colonialists have taught us, mm -hmm. us who were, were, were scattered and taken away, and us who remain here, mm -hmm. they got us to just not like our country. Yeah. And, 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 and there is a reason behind for those who were scattered not to like Africa, for those who were born on this continent not to like Africa, so that they can continue to feed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep repeating that because that is true. <laughs> yes, yes. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. when, is, when are we going to wake up? Because let me tell you, we are in the time of wake up. Amen. Amen. I mean, you, you said a mouthful. It's like you can feel it. It's like yeah. it's, a, it's a feeling that this is our time. That when he said he would wake up his children. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, and that's precisely what is happening. So sure. with you guys being here, what do you feel that, that Ghana can offer you that the West couldn't, that the UK could not? 
Good question. Do you want to go first? No. <laughs> Do you know what? We were disinherited, um, lands were taken from us when we were snatched from here mm -hmm. because um, all of sub Saharan is holy land. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand that. Jerusalem, the real name of Jerusalem, Jerusalem Ikayan Army, is in the Kalahari Desert in Botswana. Mm. Hello. Come on now. That's a mic drop, by right? the way, but and most so people would miss that. So let's yeah. move on. <laughs> and so all, so all of Abram's descendants have inherited this land. But I tell you what, when you're in the West, when you're in the US, when you're in other countries scattered abroad, can you own any land? No. Answer me. Mm. I mean, you, you hear that a lot. So you feel that the, that the land is in Botswana, that the Holy Land is in Botswana. The, the, the central, the part. central part. All Holy Land mm -hmm. is from Senegambia in the west, from these parts, stretching over to the east in Kenya, then all the way up to the tip of the south. All of that is Holy Land, and it was given to Abram. Abram mm. Abram's wife, where does she come from? Where did Sarah come from? She came from Paddan Aram, it says in the Bible. Paddan is Cameroon and Aram is Nigeria. Hello. Wow. You hit on something because some people they may disagree with you. They'll be like, oh, well, well, the Holy Land is someplace else. Well, don't, but you... well, don't come after me, please. <laughs> Don't okay, listen, 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 this is this is open to debate. But I will say <laughs> I I agree with you because there's some there's some evidence out there that's it's really compelling. But you see, you see the thing mm. is we have to do our research. Yeah. Because part of the style mm -hmm. of the colonialists was that, you know, get them all to be illiterate so they don't read. And we're gonna put the information in books because they'll never read books. So in our coming back, we have to read the books and we have to research. And that's the key. Research is key because I mean, it's like we've been, we've been told so many lies. But when you go into further research, you're like, okay, this wasn't the way I was taught. So it's almost like breaking the matrix. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's like breaking the matrix and coming back really to, instead of his story, <laughs> what they teach us, the real foundational. The academics and the theologians actually know all of this. Black, mm. white, Chinese, Hebrew, they know. They know it. It's not popular amongst working class people mm -hmm. and needs to be for working class people yeah. <clears throat> to have a mindset change. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's not, um, it's not mysticism mm -hmm. as to where is the geography, who exactly. was the history? Who were the people? What was the war? That's not mysticism, that's history. Right. So if you're uh, a, a, a researcher of history, the evidence is clear. It is. But amongst <laughs> us who are not academics, yeah. we wonder if it's true. But right. um, there's, a, there's a work of education to be done. I think so. Starting, starting, yeah. starting with the Bible, mm -hmm. review the Bible. How it was put together, when it was put together, who it was put together by, mm -hmm. for what purpose? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> what was inserted and what was mm -hmm. taken out? See, because that's really the key. It's been we've been interpreted one way, you know, of the Bible, but actually it goes so much deeper than that. Yeah. You know, so wow, this is so fascinating. I'm just loving this conversation, <laughs> guys. I don't want to lose. I don't want to stop. <laughs> so one last question: <clears throat> Any advice? that you would give to your brothers and sisters that are coming from the diaspora before coming to Ghana? Good question. What did you say? Um, <laughs> well, well, well you, you, you could come from two angles because there are some that are coming because of the distress that they're facing. Their sons are being shot and stabbed in the streets and in, 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 in the various different hoods in the US and in, uh, and in the UK. And some are simply running that's it, to a place of safety. Some actually know what time of day it is. Yeah. Some know that we are in the time where the Most High has said, he said it in, 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 in um, Romans chapter 11, he said, I'm going to go back for my people. Yes. I'm going back for those 
who I made a covenant with, the descendants of Abram. Mm -hmm. And even though there are going to be a small ma ma majority, minority, a small minority, which remnant. is called which is called the remnant. Right, sorry. right. Um, um, I made, nevertheless, I made a covenant with them. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I need to go back for them because I made a promise. Mm -hmm. And there are those that know. And so I would say to those who know, don't, you know, think about, don't, <laughs> don't stay there thinking about, you know what, I need to, oh, quickly, five jobs, I need to save all this money mm -hmm. to get over here. Otherwise you may miss your opportunity. If the wow. most is calling you, and he's tapping you on your shoulder mm -hmm. and you can't get any rest or any peace about it day and night, you better get your bags packed, even if it's one bag, and you better hurry and get yourself back over here to El Kebulun. Come on now. Come and that's on. if the Most High is calling you. If yes. the Most High isn't calling you mm -hmm. and your decision is much more based on practical economics mm -hmm. and relocation for the purposes of um, a lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, quality of life, standard of living, because often people move from the first world <clears throat> to the third world mm -hmm. because their money goes further. Right, right. And if that's the motivation, and what I would say to my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. um, in the UK specifically, mm -hmm. is don't come mm -hmm. unless you have the kind of pioneering spirit that our parents had when they left the Caribbean Absolutely. and came to the UK. They mm -hmm. came, they were a minority, uh, the weather was awful, they faced hostility, there was no certainty with jobs, etc, etc. And 75 mm -hmm. years later, we as a community have achieved great things in the UK, but it took a pioneering spirit. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't suggest anybody comes here unless they have a pioneering spirit. And what, and what Linford is talking about is talking about the Windrush era, mm -hmm. which began when that ship called the Windrush took uh, our parents from the colonies, the former slave colonies of the Caribbean, and they they said, um, this is post this is post Second World War. Now let's call them in to come and rebuild Britain. Mm -hmm. That's what they did. Wow, wow. That's what and they that's did. That's not widely talked about. It's not widely talked mm -hmm. about. So we are a Windrush babies. Windrush babies. I like that. She was the, they are the Windrush babies, yeah. you know? We, so. we helped mm -hmm. significantly to rebuild the UK mm -hmm. after the war. So when we come here, we can be um, uh, imposed upon, if you like, mm -hmm. to do great things. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's what we've done. I like that. I like that spirit. I like this, guys. I'm just <laughs> loving this conversation. It's so much, so much full of information. I didn't expect to get like a history lesson and all of this time <laughs> from you guys. I mean, it's just awesome. Oh. So since you guys, I would put in the scholar. Are you guys? Would you guys be considered scholars? I know you guys are authors. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, uh, you guys yeah, are well, authors. So yeah. please, really fast, just like one minute, because I know this interview is like so <laughs> But can you tell us just a little bit about you guys being authors, like what books, where to find them, you know, for our viewers? Right. Um, yes, yeah, so I've written, I've written a number of books. I won't say how many um, because we don't have time. Uh, I, I've given you the link, haven't I? Yes. So where people can access um, the books on. Uh, Lulu.com, some of the books are on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, and books on worship, books on blood trauma, mm. books uh, about poetry, every, everyday life things, poetry. So it, there's a variety of books there. Wow, well I've read one of your books, and I mean, it is just jam-packed full of information. Mm -hmm. I mean, things that I did not mm -hmm. even know. Mm -hmm. It really is, I mean, wow. really scholarly information. Wow. So, I mean, please, you guys, get some of these books. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss it. So with you, Mr. Linford, you're also, well, you're a poet. You serenaded us with your lovely <laughs> poetry. Yeah, yeah, my, my, um, mission is to um, enable us to speak more honestly to each other as individuals mm. and then as families mm -hmm. and then as um, uh, wider communities. So um, the poetry uh, challenges us to be honest about the things we are uncomfortable saying to each other. 
Mm. So, kind of taking us out of our comfort zone a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Mm, so, I so, like that. so my family don't like to read my poetry because they think I'm speaking about them, which oh. I'm not necessarily. Uh, which are I'm you not. listening? Are you sure about that? <laughs> Which I'm not. Uh, I think, but, that, I think he's know, got a little bit like I'm, some I'm shade sure. throwing a little bit, but it's yeah. tight, but it's right. That's yeah. the saying. It's tight, but it's right. So, yeah. oh my gosh, I can't just thank you enough, both of you, for coming oh. on to the channel. Mm. This was an awesome interview. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys for tuning in. We will have their links in the description box for you guys to check out some of their books, their poetry. I mean, it is just absolutely awesome. So please, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and definitely share this information with others. Until next time, bye. Bye.